Okay, so now we're down to the actual drawing portion. I'm going to make sure that I only have my background and one layer above it to do my drawing on. If you got a lot of other stuff going on from practicing or experimenting, I would clean it up with tossing away those layers. Okay, first thing I want to do is get my brush set up really nicely. Make sure I'm on my brush. Make sure it's down to a size that's going to make a good thin line drawing. So I'm just going to hit that left bracket key to get the kind of line I want. Maybe even narrower than that. I'm going to make sure that it's not too soft. I'll pump the hardness up to 90 something so that we can make a nice crisp drawing. Maybe even make it smaller than, smaller than that. Okay. Control Z takes away what I've just done. Now I'm simply going to draw a circle the best that I can. Not a beautiful circle. <laughs> However, this is just a practice. And yes, I know that there are tools, the shape tools, to be able to make an absolutely perfect circle on your screen. But you'll remember that the shading a sphere exercise that we're doing right now stands in for just an example of techniques you can use for everything. So if you are doing a drawing of a person, for example, and you've sketched it all out, you're not going to have a shape tool to do that. So I'm just going to use this as kind of an example. We're going to freehand it as best as possible in this case. Then what I'm going to do is clean up my drawing by putting a new layer above it. I click the new layer button. I'm going to choose a different color and I'm going to just make a really smooth line that follows this and only keeps what I think is important. I'm also going to turn on smoothing up here. For a minute, to, as just an example, I'm going to turn it to 100%. So what that does basically, it, it puts a handle on the dot that you're drawing. So when I draw, it actually goes out in front of where the line is. So it's like using a really smooth handle on things. For the circle, actually, it might be great to have that turned all the way up to 100. I'm going to choose a lighter color. And I'm going to start at the top and just sketch around smoothly, kind of follow that line. Get it the best that I can. Fill in a little bit more. Perfect. Then I can toss out that layer underneath. And I'm going to have to clean this up a little bit more. Just by going in. And so just do the best you can and then continue to adjust and clean. As I say in all my art classes, drawing is a process of refinement. Meaning you don't draw things perfectly the first time. You draw them as best as you can and then you refine it. You make it better and better and better as you go. So now I can pull my eraser tool out. It looks like this over here. It's three things below your brush. Or I can push the E key on my keyboard and I can size this up and down to the same way that I would size up a brush. I'll get rid of my extra lines. Oh, you can see my eraser is really soft as well. So you can also go in and adjust it just like you would with a brush, make it fully opaque, make it as hard edged as you need to. And then you can go in and just kind of zap it away as you need to. Hmm, you see how my circle is looking a lot better from that sloppy thing I started with. So I think this is a good lesson, not to like freak out and worry about making things perfect at the very start, because especially when you're doing digital painting, there's always ways to adjust and make it better and better, and it's gonna be fine. Now what I wanna do is put in the color of my sphere. I'm gonna add another layer, but I want this layer to be underneath my drawing. So I'm gonna draw it down here. And to keep things from being too confusing, I'm going to double click on the layer name and I'm going to change it. I'm going to name it Sketch. And I'll double click on this, this layer and I'll name it Color. Perfect. So now I'm just going to choose a nice middle color for my sphere. Up here in my color palette, you can see it goes light at the top, dark at the bottom. As you slide right, it gets more intense and saturated. As you go left, it gets more grayed out. 
So if I, even though it looks green in here, if I go all the way over to the side, I'm going to get a gray color. So I want a kind of a middle, not too light, not too dark, not super saturated because that's not very real world, but maybe something about there. And then you could actually slide through all the different colors till you find one that you really like. I'll go with this kind of greeny mint color. That looks nice. And I'm going to want a bigger brush. So let's size that up. Ooh, you know what? I might even be able to get it big enough that I can hit it with one boop. <laughs> nice. Or you can just color it in. Either way, and make sure you've got that all colored. I'm going to take off the smoothing because that's not doing me any favors there. So just color it all in. I'm going to turn off the sketch by hitting this eyeball. Wink. And you can make any adjustments if you need to with your eraser and brush tool to clean up the edges. Whatever. This It looks like it could use a little bit of touch up there. Ooh, new. But once you're all done with that, we're going to look at a new kind of layer. So we'll go over here and add another layer to our project. And now I'm going to go, I'll make sure the layer is directly above the color layer where I painted it in. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key. And when I put my cursor in between the two of them, holding down the Alt key, you'll see that we get this box with an arrow on it. And if we click while it's a box with an arrow, this new layer has been set in some. So it's acting as what we call a clipping mask. On a clipping mask, you will only be allowed to paint directly where something already exists on the layer below it. So in other words, if I take blue and I have my brush on there, I will paint across and it will only paint where the layer below it already has something on it. If you look over here closely, you can see there's a great big scribble going on. And if I move this so it's not a clipping mask anymore, it goes everywhere. But when it is a clipping mask, you can only see the part of it that is directly over where there's some color on the layer below. So the benefit of this, I'm just going to control Z to step back. The benefit of this is that now as we try to shade our sphere, we don't have to worry about going outside of the edges right now. We can uh, focus on other important things. So I'm going to now find a brush that's nice and big and soft around the edges. I'm going to want to decrease my opacity because I don't want every pass to have very much effect on it yet. We want to be kind of soft about it. And we need to get a color that will work well for the dark shadow. So my color is in the wrong spot over here. So what I'm going to do is, while I'm on the brush, I hold down the Alt key, I tap inside this color, and it will give me exactly that same color right here that this is. And now I'm going to drop it down darker, somewhat like this. And when I paint on it, I have a darker color. Did you see that? If I turn up my opacity all the way just so you can see it, that's the color we're painting with, and the brush is very soft around the edges. So I'll take that back down again. <clears throat> so now what we can start to do is paint in that dark shadowy area near the bottom, our core shadow. And we can paint it in kind of a, a crescent shape so that it comes up the sphere. Now you'll see that down here, it kind of becomes just all the same sort of thing and it should continue to get dark. So I'm just going to go down and grab a darker color to paint the farthest edge. And I just keep brushing over and over again because you'll see I've got my opacity very far down. So each pass doesn't add too very much to it. So it's already starting to look a lot more roundish, right? I also want to add some highlights to it. So maybe I hit Alt to go back to the main color so I can just go up some, make it lighter. And then I brush that lighter area on here. The highlight's going to be more of a circle shape, not a crescent moon. So more of a circle shape. And as it comes out from the middle, it gets lighter and lighter. So I'm going to spend more time brushing the lighter area and less time brushing the farther away area. Now the thing about this is you can go back and forth and back and forth. You can hit the Alt key to grab your dark color again. 
and just kind of paint it back in. If you've gone too far, oh no, I painted up into this area. You can take your Alt key, hit in there again, and push it, push it down. I can grab my light, I can push it down farther and farther. So I'm just sampling by Alt and tap, and then I'm painting with that color. And if we need to extend our middle color more, we can go like that. And you can see it's super useful to be able to sample and then just paint in that color. Another good thing about it is if you are, are shading something and you have it a little more harsh, so like I'm going to make my brush harder here for a moment and where it's more visible. So what if you're shading with a darker or a harder sort of a brush and you end up getting like these harder shadows and you want an in-between color to mix with it, you can just grab a color that's somewhere in between the light in the middle there and you can paint with that color and you can just grab a different color and you can work it across. You can even do something where you have like a really dark color down here, you paint that in and then you see where it hits the lighter color and you just sample from that and then you sample this even lighter color and then you, as they mix you sample the lighter and lighter colors and just work it across. So the sampling is super grand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and re-soften everything. What I had was good, so I'm just going to control Z until I am back to where my really soft sphere was hanging out. There we go. <clears throat> Beautiful, and that's kind of all there is to doing that. So if we want to create a reflection up in the top, we could go in there and shrink our brush some and add just like a really bright reflection up there if we want a, a shiny sort of material. And it's looking fairly realistic. Now I want to add also a background to it. So I'm just going to click another layer, drag that layer down underneath the sphere. And I'm going to do something where I want to mask in an area and just paint a certain spot. So I'm going to go to what's called the marquee tool. It's on ellipse right now, so I'll hold it down until I get the rectangle. And then I'm going to just draw across and select a section where I want the table to be. Now. If I go back to my brush, I'm only allowed to paint in that area. It doesn't go out and beyond. So that's another good way to mask things. So I'm going to bring the brush pretty hard again. I'm going to up my opacity to 100. And I'm going to make my counter kind of a maybe an orangish but mostly gray color. Not too bright, not too dark and I'll just fill that in completely. You can also use the paint bucket tool which is over here. You can just like tap on that several times so you got that all filled in. And I'm now, eh, I think I will also grab this part up here. So I'm going to hit control D to deselect everything and I'll make my background just kind of like my very back background above my table. I'm just gonna make it a dark color like that just by tapping. So now the paint bucket tool it's going to color everything that's the same color, so I just painted in all that white really quick. And now I need a cast shadow, correct? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go over to here, I think. I'm going to click on my color layer. I'm going to also hold down control now, so I can also grab that layer. Take them both at once. And I will go to my move tool over here. I'm going to grab them and shift them around, and I can drag them wherever I want. Perfect. Now on my background layer, I want to add a shadow. I'm going back to my table here. And I'm going to choose my brush tool, or hit control, or no, just hit B, and you'll have your brush tool. And now I want a darker version of the table. So I'll select it, I'll sample it with Alt. I'll go to a darker version of it, but I want to turn down my opacity. I don't want my brush to be too soft because because uh, the cast shadow is going to have kind of a hard edge to it. And then I just paint in my shadow in the general shape I know it should be. As I get closer to the sphere, I'll paint it more so that it gets darker. It goes out, I'll let it lighten a smidge. And then just like before, if my shadow's taken on a weird shape or I've got stuff out where I don't want to, I just hold Alt, I get this table color, and I'll paint back in that table color over my shadow, just back and forth, we're adjusting. 
because drawing is a process of refinement. You just work back and forth and back and forth until things look how you want them to be. And I'll add a bit more dark, I think, right up close. Yeah. Wonderful. So if you feel like it, you can go back onto your the sphere here. You can adjust it and darken it up. I think I think um, it could be darker along there, so maybe I'll add more shadow onto it. You'll notice I'm working on the clipping mask layer up here so that it's only drawing on the sphere itself. Soften that up. So I can make that darker, and then you'll remember there was some reflected light on the original sphere. The darkness didn't come all the way to the bottom. So I think I'll select some of this lighter stuff. I'll paint it kind of down here where I know the light is reflecting, so it has that back glow to it. And I might even tint it a bit towards that orangish color that the table is, just the tiniest amount, and just add a little bit of that color along the edge of the sphere so it's reflecting some of the color of the table too, which will make it really pop and become kind of alive. So play with it. Try to compare it to that picture of the shaded sphere that I shared with you and just work it back and forth until it looks like you want it to. There's plenty of room for adjustment. And then, wham, you've done your first shading in Photoshop. That's awesome. We're going to go into a still life next. So if you are feeling confused in this one, like you don't know how to adjust the brush size, etc., go back and watch the other videos. You must have missed it. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.